Hello students, Mr. Courtney here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about percent yield and how to calculate percent yield and how to use percent yield to, to determine theoretical yield or, or actual yield. So what's the theoretical yield? It is a number that is obtained or is a calculated number obtained from a balanced chemical reaction. It is the maximum amount of product that can be produced from a given amount of reactants. Just like when we did limit, when we talked about limiting reactants, you're given the masses or the moles of two reactants and you want to determine how much of the product you can get. The limiting amount, the smallest amount that is produced by each reactant, that is our theoretical yield. How much do we expect to get? How much of that product could be formed given that amount of reactants? So it's always going to be a calculated number and we have to use our stoichiometric ratio to determine that. Actual yield, however, is what we measure in the lab, what we obtain, the mass that we obtain. It is going to be less than your theoretical value, or sometimes it could be equal to, but it should never be more than your theoretical value. So your actual yield should be less than, but are equal to, but not more than your theoretical value. And again, it's an experimental value. It is the amount of product that you measure, whether it's in volume, grams, whatever we're measuring it in. So percent yield, the ratio of the actual yield to the theoretical yield out of 100. So we take the actual yield, divide by the theoretical, and then multiply it by 100. So let's look at a couple examples. We're asked, what is the percent yield if 3.74 grams of copper is produced when 1.87 grams of aluminum reacts with an excess of copper to sulfate? So we write our balanced equation. And here we're already told that copper to sulfate is an excess. So we, so we don't have to use it in our calculations, but we need it in our balanced equation. So we have to determine what we're given. We're given 3.74 grams of Copper. And we told that this is produced and copper is a product. So that means it's our actual value. We start with 1.87 grams of aluminum. So that means that's how much we're given. And we want to find how many grams of copper produced from that. So we have to find our theoretical yield. We're already given the actual yield. We need to find our theoretical yield. So we start with grams to grams conversion. So grams of aluminum, we go to moles of aluminum. From moles of aluminum, we go to moles of our product, copper, using the ratio, the mole ratio from our balanced equation, three to two. So we have three moles of copper to two moles of aluminum. Then once we have that, we can go to grams of copper by multiplying by the formula mass or the atomic mass of copper in this case. And that gives us 6.60 grams of copper. So that 6.60 is our theoretical yield. To find our percent yield, we take our actual yield, which is 3.74, divide by our theoretical, multiply by 100, and that will give us 56.7%. This one asks us, the percent yield for the reaction between phosphorus trichloride and chlorine to give phosphorus pentachloride is 83.2%. What is the mass of phosphorus pentachloride expected from 73.7 .7 grams of phosphorus trichloride with excess chlorine? So we have the balance equation already, and we have to dissect the question to see what information is given to us. We're given the percent yield. We're given the amount of our reactant. We don't have the amount of product. So that means we need to go ahead and calculate our theoretical value first. Once we calculate our theoretical value, then we can use our percent yield equation to determine how much of it we actually got. So we start with our grams of phosphorus trichloride, convert to moles of phosphorus trichloride. Once we convert it to moles of phosphorus trichloride, we'll go to moles of phosphorus pentachloride. We have one mole of phosphorus pentachloride to one mole of phosphorus trichloride. So it's a one to one ratio. 
Once we have that moles of phosphorus pentachloride, we then convert it to grams of phosphorus pentachloride by multiplying by its formula mass. So our theoretical yield is 111.8 grams of phosphorus pentachloride. Now that we have our theoretical yield, we can go ahead and calculate our actual yield, which is 83.2% off 118. 111.8. So that's 111.8 multiplied by 83.2 divided by 100. Or you could have decimalized it. 111.8 multiplied by 8.832. And that gives us 93.0 grams of phosphorus pentachloride. So here, what we need to remember is that our actual yield is what we've measured from the reaction. Our theoretical yield is determined, is calculated rather from our balanced chemical equation. To calculate percent yield, we need to know the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. Alright, so that takes us to the end of this video. Until the next time, I'm out. Blessings.